Today on the Sick Podcast, we recap the trade that was and whether or not the Montreal Canadiens got enough. There's a player that the GM says he likes. He doesn't want to trade. Or are there players that maybe he should trade that he won't? A player was back last night. Could he be the number two that they're looking for? And another player is red hot. Was he deprived of a big trophy and uncertainty around a very key contract and a very key player? And is one player all but done? All that and more coming up. Francois Gagnon of RDS right here on the Sick Podcast. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to the Sick Podcast with Tony Maradero. The sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. And now a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadians win the Stanley Cup. Sports entertainment like no other. Brought to you by 8.6 Beer. Intense by nature. And Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs won the Cup, it's time you went back to Lacage. The menu will surprise you. Hello, I'm Marinero. It is the Sick Podcast. Tell all your friends about it. You can follow us on all social media platforms. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at The Sick Podcast, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's absolutely free. It's brought to you by 8.6 Beer, intense by nature, intense like me by nature, the beer for those who follow their instinct and live their passions the way I do in order to make their mark. And La Cage. If the last time you went to La Cage was when the Habs won the Cup, it's time you go back to La Cage. The menu will surprise you. You know when you can go back? You can go on Saturday, March 26th at 7 p.m. I will be there. Our sick podcast contributors will be there. The entire sick team behind the scenes and at reporting will be there. Join us at La Cage de Cari on Rue de Jockeys. Call them and RSVP. We'll see you there on that night. It'll be the Canadians at the Leafs. We look forward to that. I look forward to seeing all of you. Today, it's Marinaro and Gagnon. François Gagnon, comment ça va? Très bien, merci. Thank you very much, Tony. All right. Um, thanks for doing this. I haven't heard your opinion yet on the Sherrod trade. Um, you know, a lot of people no, in hockey... You listen to RDS a little bit more. <laughs> well, I haven't heard your opinion here on the, on the podcast. A lot of people in hockey... Uh, think that the Canadians got good value for Ben Sherratt. They got a, a, a B prospect. They got a first-round pick in what appears to be a very good 2023 draft and a fourth-round pick in 2022. However, as you know, the diehard Canadians fans, enough is never enough. They want the better prospect, and they want a couple of picks and and all that stuff. What do you make of it? Well, I think Kent Hughes maximized the value that he could get for Ben Sherratt. Let's remember... Everybody here that Ben Charette is a really good defenseman, a rugged defenseman that's going to help the Florida Panthers, no doubt. But he's no Bobby Orr. And he doesn't have a contract after this season. So getting three elements in this, for me, was the key for Kent Hughes and the Canadians. And I think, I really think that whatever happens, they gave them the chance to succeed. If you go big on one, let's say on one prospect, you believe he's good, but he's not. Well, suddenly you don't have anything. So you have the prospect, a B prospect, as you said, but he brings speed, and that's the new DNA of the Montreal Canadiens. A fourth-round pick, we'll see. And that first-round pick is unprotected. I'm not saying here that next year the Florida Panthers will be a team that's going to go into the lottery. That's not what I'm saying. But they could go from first, second, third, fourth overall to a team roughly around 10, 11, 12 spot if there's injuries, if there are goaltending issues, if there's any kind of issues. Yeah. I think we've seen that in Montreal. So that's all good. And uh, you know what? The big winners now are Ben Sherratt and the Florida Panthers, but we need to give us a little bit of time and a little bit more than a little bit of time to understand what's going to happen with the Canadians for this. Kent Hughes said that the previous general manager had talked contract extension with Ben Sherratt's clan in the offseason, but once he was named the general manager of this team, for him, his plan all along was to trade Ben Sherratt. He added that he likes Brett Kulak, so 
Uh, here's a player who's a pending unrestricted free agent as well. Uh, the trade deadline goes Monday. Based on what he said now, you have a feeling he's not going to trade him. By the way, he could possibly trade him and then re-sign him in the offseason. Heck, he could even do the same thing for Ben Sherrod if he wanted to. That doesn't happen very often. What is it that you think he likes about Kulak? I have an opinion. I'd like to hear yours, and then I'll give you mine. Well, he likes the contract. He likes the value that he gets for that contract. He, uh, and Kulak is a player that I think is a little bit better than I think and that a lot of fans think. He doesn't do anything great. But overall, when you look at the spectrum of what he brings on the ice, it's it's fair and it's at sometimes good. When he plays with confidence, it's real good. Sometimes you lose that confidence. Sometimes you try to do too much. And whenever he does that, those are the times when we've seen him fail uh, in the last couple of seasons. That said, I can't use like uh, uh, Brett Kulak, that's fine. He likes uh, uh, Arthur Lekanen, that's fine too. He likes uh, Jay Callen. That's all right. He doesn't want to make any fire sale. That's all good. But in this situation, Tony, he needs to listen. He needs to listen to any or every offer that he's yeah. going to get for anybody yeah. and value them. It's one thing to like Brett Kulak if you're getting something in return that has a greater value for the future of your team, not for the present, but for the future of your team. You need to listen and you need sometimes to gamble. He probably thinks that Ben Sherratt's going to get himself a four-year deal, maybe probably five-plus million dollars, and probably says, you know what, I don't want to go there. I got Brett Kulak, who's probably not as good as Ben Sherratt, but he does skate very well, and he's two and a half years younger than Ben Sherratt, and maybe the Canadians can get him at a two- or three-year deal, maybe below $3 million. So at that point, he's saving money. He has a defenseman who's younger. He can't trade every defenseman either, right? He's... You know, so you trade Ben Sherratt, you're planning on trading Jeff Petrie. Shea Weber basically unofficially retired. You can't get rid of everybody. The kids are going to go out and get the Jordan Harris's of this world that you plan to sign, which I think is probably already signed. He just hasn't announced it yet. Caden uh, Gooley uh, that you're going to bring up. Struble at one point. They can't all be here next year either, right? Probably they might be in Laval. Probably all of them will be in Laval, so... You have to have some guys here, which brings me to Corey Schooneman, who Martin St. Louis, and when a new coach comes on board, it's a fresh start for everybody, and a coach always takes a liking to a player or two in particular. And you get the feeling that the guy on offense, besides you know the usual suspects who are Suzuki and Caulfield, you get the feeling that one of those guys on offense is Rem Pitlick, and you get the feeling that one of those guys on defense is Corey Schooneman, who scored his first NHL goal. St. Louis has gone out of his way to praise Schooneman. My question to you, Francois Gagnon, is do you think Schooneman will be a regular on the Canadiens' blue line next year? And if that's the decision that's taken, do you think it's a good one? Uh, I'm looking at my crystal ball here, and I can tell you one thing. I, I, it's the, It's been the best call-up defenseman for the Canadiens this season. Now, will he be ready ne next year to get that step? Hey, that remains to be seen. I would like to tell yet yeah, to answer yes to that question, Tony, but the real answer will come from Schooneman, from the way he plays. Now, Martin St. Louis gives him all the confidence in the world, feel him welcome, just the same way as he's doing with Rem Pitlick, as you said. So there's an opening there. And, and what is good for him is that he can play on the right side too. You know, and that's why see uh, to see Ch Chirat coming back to Montreal for me would be like far-fetched a little bit because even though he played really good on the right side of Romanov for the last two weeks, um, he's a lefty. And, and all the no other names, the Caden Goulis, the Harris that you talked about, they will be up on the left side. They already have Joel Edmondson there. They already have Romanov, who's going to eat a lot of big minutes next year. So they need to keep openings on the right side and when he mean opening it's going to be wide open but get some money get some dough to make sure that he got to found a good number one or number two defenseman there because i mean uh i like david savard a lot but he's a third pairing defenseman in the in a good team in the nhl and asking him more would be uh, not fair for him especially if you put him on the one on one d pair so having said that you take a look at that contract and you think Mark Bergevin overpaid. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but if you think he's a third-pairing defenseman at getting $4.5 million per year, do you think that's a bad contract? 
You mean Savard? Yes, yeah, I think that Savard is at 3.5, the same amount that uh, Chirot was and the same amount that Edmondson oh. has. So I thought because he won the Stanley Cup that the Canadians or any other team would have to go upper than that. So at 3.5, I believe it's a good contract. Uh, more than that and longer term, I, I, would, I would agree with you. But right now at this level, I think it's a fair contract. Maybe not the best one, but it's a fair contract. In conversation, uh, well, of course, with Francois Gagnon of RDS. Uh, yeah, you're right. It is, it's, it's $14 million over four years. That's right. It is 3.5. All right. Okay. Uh, let's move on. Speaking of um, speaking of the defenseman now. So, Schooneman, uh, big surprise. Um, I, you know what? You just made a comment and you said it's the best call-up of the defenseman this season. You're right. He's been their best call-up. I mean, yeah. I mean, without being unbelievable – he hasn't had a bad game. And he's safe. And when you want to call up, you look at the guy coming in. The, 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 the main thing that you want is that, okay, what is he going to give me when I put yeah. him on the ice? Is he going to be a huge bag of surprises and mainly bad surprises? And with Schooneman, it's not that. You have a hockey player who comes in, doesn't do anything flashy. I mean, that goal yesterday, happy for him. But you saw the reaction of uh, uh, Ottinger, the goaltender. Look at his both uh, defensemen there yeah. or uh, teammates, and they jumped in front of the puck. And he said, well, guys, if you do that, better block it because I don't see anything. So good for uh, Schooneman. He deserves that goal. It's yeah. a nice reward. But, you know, as I said, great call up, safe play, and let's see what is going to happen for him next season. All right, speaking of contract, Mark Bergevin uh, had acquired Christian Dvorak from the Arizona Coyotes. He came with a four-year deal at $4.45 million. The Canadians have been looking for a mentor for Nick Suzuki. I think when you say mentor, you think of a player who's above 30 years old or near 30 years old in the prime of his career, and that doesn't appear to be Dvorak. But my question to you is, can it be? Can Dvorak be the number two centerman next year who can put up 50 plus points for the Canadians once he, he is healthy and has, you know, uh, one full year with Martin St. Louis as his coach? Well, that's it. 16 games ago, my answer would have been no. 16 games ago, I would have told you, Tony, whatever you can do with Jonathan Drouin, sending him anywhere, do it. Whatever return you have. But now, looking at what Martin St. Louis has been able to do with some players. And I'm not here talking about only about Suzuki and Caulfield. I mean, yeah. the results are fantastic. But the new, the new dynamic of the team, the fact that this team, uh, you cannot count them out when they, they give up a goal or two or three or even four in Winnipeg. I know they lost that game, but they came back from a, a 0-4 deficit anyway. So because of all that, I want to give the benefit of the doubt to Dvorak and I will give the benefit of the doubt to Jonathan Drouin too because maybe, and it's a big maybe, Martin St. Louis can succeed where others were not able to do so. I thought that if Dominique Ducharme, who coached uh, Jonathan Drouin, the minors could not do it, nobody would be able to do it. But maybe, maybe that Martin St. Louis has something there. You know, the respect value, the Hall of Fame player that is telling you, hey, I done that. And it was good. And I had to dri drill down in my body, in my heart, yeah. and in my character so you can do it too. Maybe it's going to happen. I may be more confident toward Dvorak because I don't know him enough than towards Dwayne because, you know, the, uh, the example or the bad examples are piling up here. But still, I want to give him a chance. If I were a betting man and, and for Which Betway, for the love of the game, sign up and deposit on Betway for a 100% deposit bonus. The easiest sports book for Canadians, e-transfers are accepted. I would bet that Jonathan Drouin will not extend his contract with the Montreal Canadiens, which was a six-year, $33 million contract, which is up next year. To pick up on what you just said, I agree with you. Drouin will not be traded between now and Monday. His value is not very good, even though he's the Canadian's seventh point getter, having played 28 games less. But if you trade him next year at trade deadline day, uh, he'll only have a couple of months left on his contract. And I think a full year with Martin St. Louis and then little time left on his contract next year, you can get a lot more value for him. And 
at that point, he moves on. And speaking of players moving on, players are going to get traded between now and Monday. And, of course, you can pick up their new jersey with their new team, sportbuffshop.com, for all of your officially licensed sports apparel and our sick merchandise. Use code SICK15 for 15% off on all of their items. All right. Uh, Carey Price, his name also came up in Kent Hughes' presser yesterday. And the general manager talked about where is he with his uh, uh, with his recovery, and we know that he's on the ice. As a matter of fact, today he was on the ice with goalie coach Eric Demont. But he said, look, there's uncertainty regarding Carey Price, and that uncertainty is going to be there until we see him in a game situation and we'll see how his knee responds. Uh, he went on to mention that it's not his intention to trade any goalies between now and the trade deadline. Francois, without knowing this, because I don't, but I pick up on a few things. Sometimes I'm on, sometimes I'm off. I'd love to hear if you're picking up on something or maybe I'm reading too much into it. Can it be that a conversation took place and like, hey, Carrie, where are you at, you know? Try it out, and if it doesn't work out at that point, you know what? LTIR, I mean, can you can you kind of, you talked about your crystal ball before. I mean, do you see an LTIR situation if Carrie attempts to come back and he's not the carry of old, but he ends up looking like an old carry instead? Could that be in the cards? Well, it could be in the cards. Obviously, it could be, but it would not be the best situation for the Canadians. LTR is good, okay? Uh, 16 or 17 teams right now use the LTR to get above the salary cap. But that amount of money, the Weber contract, uh, whatever would happen with Carey Price, is still staying on your uh, your, your mass salarial, your payroll. Yes. So it's not the perfect situation. So this year, having Price and Weber on, give it a little bit of leeway of the Canadians, but you don't want to get there because at some point, you know, the Caulfield, we know Suzuki is going to get a huge chunk of money. Gallagher is going to be uh, uh, taking a lot of money too. So they will need a bit of leeway. So this is not the best situation. Uh, I believe that the Canadians will find a way to get rid of the contract of Shea Weber. Are they going to give a little bit? Are they going to receive a little bit? That I don't know. They might receive a little bit if a team really wants that contract, but it's not going to be a huge deal. The huge deal there will be to send that contract away. Now, if Weber's gone, Price could stay there. Could he be bought out or in any situation? I don't want to go there because what I want to see, I want to see Price play one, two, three, four, five games. Because it's after the fifth, the sixth, the 10 games mark that then the knee will come back. You know, he's been practicing. Always, I always say the same thing, Tony. When I hear, uh, oh, he's practicing, that's the good news. No, the good news will be tomorrow. Is he able to walk tomorrow yeah. after a good practice? That's the good news. Is he going to be able to practice after his first game? That will be the better news. So this is where I want to wait for Carey Price. I mean, we all know what kind of goaltender he can be. We've seen that. We also know that he can be, I don't want to use the word fragile, but he has been prone to injuries anyway. So I want to give him all the chance in the world to make sure that when he's going to come back, he will be 100% and he will start from there. Is the 100% going to stay as a whole or it going to come down really quickly to 75? That will dictate what will happen with Carey Price in the future. Bad news for Brendan Gallagher, who was taken into the boards by Faxa yesterday. He goes to the locker room. May have been uh, an injury to his ribs. I'm not so sure. Kind of looked like that. But anyway, long story short, the good news is he comes back. The, the bad news is that he misses an opportunity on a two-on-one with a couple of minutes left in the game. The puck goes the other way. The good news for Dallas is that Klingberg scores. Uh, Francois, <laughs> Brendan Gallagher has given so much to this team that any time there's a criticism coming up, I, I find them guilty of saying, or maybe not guilty of saying, we all love Gallagher. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you we all love Gallagher. But I don't know if this game got faster or Brendan Gallagher got slower there's a term in French sometimes, and I'll use it, c'est pénible. Sometimes I, I watch him, he's laboring, and, and it it's kind of, it kind of like hurts to just watch it. Yeah. How concerned are you on 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest, of what Brendan Gallagher has left in the tank? Wow, that's a huge question. 10 is the most concern I have? Yes. 
I will go to uh, three and a half, four. Wow. And the reason why I'm going to be positive on, on Brendan Gallagher, first, because yeah. I like him. Okay. I, I don't know him. I've never seen Gallagher around. Well, maybe one day at a golf tournament of the Canadians and we chatted for a big 15 seconds. I don't know the kid. I love the player since day one. I'm not too concerned because he needs to understand where he's at. He's talking with Martin Saint-Louis. Martin Saint-Louis will be able to maybe coach him a little bit. Find a way to adapt yourself, the type of player that you are, to your new reality. Brendan Gallagher can play 18 or 19 minutes a game. Brendan Gallagher will, will need to understand that sometimes, you know, you need to find a way to be smarter on the ice, around the net. Fans are going crazy. That goal should never been allowed. And if it would be Gallagher, it would be disallowed. Of course it would be because Gallagher goes there, knows first. He's going to touch the guy. He's not thinking, yeah. not because he's, he's stupid, because he's so devoted to his team and he's so passionate of everything. That's the reason why he will get a, a shoulder or an elbow to a goaltender and then the goal will be disallowed. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. He needs to understand. He's not getting any faster. He's not going to score 40 goals anymore, but he is the driving force of that team, the heart of that team. The hands of that team are Suzuki and Caulfield. That's obvious, but they need the leadership. Now, I'm going to say something here that will look a little bit maybe exaggerated, but I remember uh, some players around the league that were coming in, yeah. older guys, and people were saying, well, what are their value? Well, their value was bringing, uh, you know, Scott Mellonby was an old guy. He was a captain, but he brought something to the teams. Gary Roberts, you know, I thought he could not skate anymore. And he could not really skate anymore. But he was in the best shape of his life, and nobody had touched his character. So he came in with teams that he brought to another level. He was not bringing the team by himself, but he was helping the ones who had the tools, the hands to do it, and the legs, the young legs to do it, he was bringing them to another level. That's what I see when I look at Brendan Gallagher. Is he going to get too much money for maybe too many years? I agree on that. But stop writing on Twitter, Brendan, like, like he's done. He's not done. He's not done yet anyway. No. And I still believe that he still have a lot of good things to give to the Canadians. Francois will only know the answer to that question once he reinvents himself. So Martin St. Louis wants him to reinvent himself. I think it's something that they're going to work on, especially in the offseason. And when he comes back next year after reinventing himself and maybe having a different form of training and having a different form of ice time and maybe wanting him to play a different game, at that point, if it doesn't give the results that the coach wants, maybe we can say at that point, he's done. All right. Uh, is a trade going to be done for Arturi Lekkinen? Because Darren Dreger tells us that, you know, there's a lot of interest in Lekkinen. We know he's not the first player that Canadians wanted to trade, but now they're at a point where they're, they're, they're discussing whether or not, you know, for what he brings to the team, whether it's worthwhile trading him or not. What would you do? Well, I would listen. And I would analyze, and I would at some point maybe take a gamble. You see, the trades that the Canadians wanted to make are done. Tyler Toffoli was a surprise to me. But, you know, they got that trade done because they wanted the value that they got. Uh, ben Sherratt, it was obvious. That trade is done. So now Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon can sit down and wait and wait and wait for maybe a, a, an overpay for any of those players. Lekanen would be the first name on your list. But yeah. we talked about earlier about Brent Kulak. And what if a team calls uh, for Jay Callen? I know that price situation is not, and Samuel Montambo is not a number one goaltender. But again, the Canadians won't be a cup contender next season. So if you get a real strong value for Jake Allen, because Edmonton, because Toronto, because a team that is in dire need of a real good goaltender would say, okay, he's the guy. Well, then it might happen. I'm not expecting anything, but I would not be surprised if that happens. If you can get first round picks, especially in 2023, if you can get uh, 
A prospects, B prospects. You know, the goal is to to take money off the cap and to get younger. Like you said, if they don't want to use the word rebuild, it's okay. We do want to know, Francois, they want to get younger. They want to revamp over the next couple of years. So I agree with you. At that point, I'm all in. All right, Cole Caulfield. Mm -hmm. Um, We don't know how he would have done at the beginning of the season under Marty St. Louis. And I, I think we have to be realistic and say he probably would not have scored at this pace either because... 11 goals in 16 games under Marty St. Louis translates to like 54 goals or whatever it is in a whole season. But you take a look at the way he was being used under Dominic Ducharme. Do you think he was deprived of a Calder trophy? Uh, Of a Calder trophy, maybe not. But uh, of a spot in the race? Yeah, maybe. Remember that Trevor Zegers is going to probably win the Calder or will be in the top three or top five, uh, said that Caulfield could score 40 goals this year. I, for one, thought that he was joking and it was putting pressure, all the pressure in the world to his old teammate and good friend. Now, looking at what is happening now, uh, I have to give more value to what Ziegler said early on in the season or even before the season. Now, uh, Caulfield, the way he plays, uh, it, it, it's, it's magic. I mean... Confident wise, he's he's back where he was in the playoff, skating around, going around. You know, he scored one goal yesterday at the end of the game, uh, and even on the power play in the uh, in the overtime. Yeah. You know, if if Mike Hoffman put that puck right on the tee for a one timer, I thought that the goal was coming, but the pass was not perfect. No offense to Hoffman, he did some good plays, but that one yesterday I was right beneath me on the press box. But you know, the other night, two goals, yeah. top net, both sides from the ice. That's what I like about coffee. I'm going everywhere. I'm going yeah. to use my shot. Call the trophy, nomination maybe, trophy maybe, but he's not depraved of a trophy, he's depraved of a place in the race. Hey, um, the last 50 goal scorer the Montreal Canadiens had was Stefan Rishi. The last 40 goal scorer they had was Brian Bellows. Uh, pardon me, Vincent Danfoss, pardon me. My buddy Joe from Marche Tanya uh, says Cole Caulfield reminds him of the flower, Guy Lafleur. So he, what? He wants to call him the cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> well, first thing first, it's not nice. Yeah. You, it's not a compliment to anybody to call him a cauliflower. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, now, any comparison for Guy Lafleur, I'm sorry, you cannot do it. I mean, he's gone. No, of course he's, not. He, he's I, I, level. Just, I just brought it up because Joe's going to give me free fruit, uh, fruit now oh. that I... Uh, <laughs> now, I'm going to call you cauliflower then. But uh, you know what? He reminds me the other number 22 that was playing with Guy Lafleur. He reminds me Steve Schott. Yeah. And that's a huge compliment shot is. at the Hall of Fame. Yeah. And he had he had a way to get those wristers and those yeah. slap shots. He, he was unbelievable. And Caulfield has that. And that's a gift of the hockey gods. Yeah. You can practice where how many hours you want. You need to have that in your DNA. And Cole Caulfield has it. Yeah, Shutt scored 60 goals in a season once upon a time. He also scored over 400 in his career. Uh, I don't know if Cole Caulfield is going to be able to accomplish either feat, but I, he's, he, I think he's more dynamic when he picks up the puck. In 30 seconds, yep. which player are you convinced that the Montreal Canadiens will not trade between now and Monday that you, Francois Gagnon, absolutely would try your very best to trade? Uh, Jeff Petrie. I think they have to wait until the summer. Terms too long, money's too uh, big. Uh, there's a trade to be made for the Canadian's sake and for Jeff Petrie's sake and his family's, but I don't believe it's going to happen by Monday. But I believe it's going to happen during the summer. Down. Yeah, I, I believe they have to. Uh, he cannot start the season here next year, nor will he, because his value cannot possibly go up. And if there's a deal to be made between now and Monday, go for it, because there's no sign that his game is getting any better. This was a lot of fun. I look forward to trade deadline day on Monday, and you and I will talk soon. Salut la visite. Perfect. Salut, bye-bye. Merci beaucoup. It's the Sick Podcast. Follow us on all our social media channels, and join us at La Cage de Carry on Saturday, March 26th. We'll be there to watch the Canadians at the lease. And reminding you, trade deadline day is Monday, March 21st. Later on that night, the Canadians host the Bruins. Ciao for now. Have a good one. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Uh
Follow the Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by 8.6, Intense by Nature, and Lakage. If the last time you went to Lakage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to Lakage. The menu will surprise you.